Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for coming. I know it's the last talk of the day, so uh, we're all feeling a bit sleepy, but we're going to try and keep it up for um, just a little bit longer. I am Elizabeth Styles. I am a fashion brand consultant, and I'm at Elizabeth Styles UK here. And I'm joined by Hannah at Epanwe, and she's at Epanwe Lifestyle. So give us a follow on Instagram. Um, my background is actually in fashion retail buying, and I left in 2018 to help independent brands with their manufacturing, marketing, and mindset. So um, yeah, there's lots on Instagram about selling and silly memes and <laughs> lots to keep you entertained over there. So definitely come and check it out. And Hannah, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi. Oh, there we go. My name is Hannah. Uh, I own Epanui, which is a jewellery shopping studio based in Bedfordshire. Uh, I'm actually exhibiting at the show today as well. I'm on stand 160 just over there. So from our shopping studio in Bedfordshire, we design and make uh, a collection of wearable jewellery for women and some men's collections come this Christmas. Uh, I met Elizabeth through working on mentoring together, so that's how we know each other. But yeah, so I have a shopping studio and we are wholesaling jewellery as well now. Amazing, and you, tell us like, let's do a bit of a rewind and go back to the beginning. <laughs> yeah. So where did it all start? It was actually kind of linked to Top Drawer, wasn't it? Yes, so uh, rewind about 10 years. So I launched a brand back in 2012 um, after I quit my job, I used to have a PR background. I worked in entertainment PR. Ironically, my last job was actually at the Walt Disney Company, which is just down the road. Um, and I left there to go into the self-employed life 10 years ago. And I'd like to say I haven't looked back. <laughs> I have a little bit. Um, sometimes. Yeah, only sometimes. Um, but yeah, after working in entertainment PR and sort of getting a good background in lots of different I worked agency side I worked in-house I did freelancing I had a really good grasp of different styles of businesses and sort of marketing yourself and PR um, and then I had a hey brain hey what do they call it brainwave brainwave <laughs> I had a brainwave and I was set up my own jewelry business so I started literally from my kitchen table um, and it kind of grew and grew from there. And I ended up getting into top drawer um, a few times and selling wholesale that way. And that's how the business kind of grew originally. After I'd been doing that for a couple of years, I got to the point with the business where I knew that I either had to basically go big or go home with it in order to keep the momentum and to earn a good salary basically um, and so then at that point I was looking for studio space to be making the jewellery from but actually the perfect unit presented itself to me where I could have a shop and studio so I have the working jewellery studio out the back where customers can come in and see us working and creating the pieces and then a lifestyle store at the front which sells obviously our jewellery first and foremost but then a collection of lovely lifestyle brands alongside a lot of which I buy from here. And what does Epanoui mean? Epanoui means to blossom, to grow and to flourish. It's a French word. And we like to think that all of our jewellery pieces help our wearers to do just that when they're wearing our lovely jewellery. Ah, oh, that's nice. <laughs> um, and today we're obviously talking about growing a community. It's said a lot online about, you know, building a community. It's so important. Yeah. Um, did you almost like realized that that was going to be a big part of your job when you set up the yeah, shop? Yeah, I think I did. So 10 years ago when I launched the brand, I'd so the shop is based in Bedford in Bedfordshire. And 10 years ago when I launched the brand, I had just moved to Bedford from London and I didn't really know anyone. So I'd gone from working five days a week in London and commuting and having my close knit friendship group to then moving somewhere where I didn't really know anyone and then also working for myself from a kitchen table so it was a complete change and I felt very isolated um, at that point I ended up going to get a coffee shop job in my local park which was a very big change from working for the biggest entertainment brand in the world to working in a small coffee shop but it was the best thing that I I think it's probably the one of the best things I ever did because it then put me slap bang in the middle of the local community and it kind of got to the point where I was doing like a little bit of a black market jewellery trade thing <laughs> with lattes. Like yeah. people got to know that I made jewellery and then came to the coffee shop to get their coffees and also being like, could you just make something for my mum? And it kind of grew from there. But at that point, I got to know that within the town, there was such a strong community feel 
And I really got to know people through chatting, and that has translated straight into the shop. Like people come to the shop not just to buy things, but that to come to have a chat to find out how you are. In a small town, I think it's the shop is way more than a shop. Yeah. It's a place to come and feel like we when people come through the doors of our shop we like to think that they're coming into our homes really they want to feel calm and relaxed and have a lovely experience um and i kind of knew that that was going to be a big part of it after working in this coffee shop and discovering that the community in bedfordshire especially the creative community is such a big part um massive that it's yeah it's translated really nicely yeah, and obviously the first time we met was yep. actually at one of your creative meetups yeah. that you hosted in store. I yep. think it was like seven or eight days before lockdown, <laughs> so we weren't oh, all God, too yeah. sure about mm -hmm. what to do or yep. um, how to interact with each other. Um, but it was really nice to know because I also am obviously living nearby, yep. and if you don't live in London, sometimes it's a little bit like, are there other people like me outside of London? <laughs> yeah. Like, do There's I have to us. be in London? Yeah. Um, and going to that and meeting people, mm. like, what made you introduce that element to your shop? So I think so. We started with the uh, monthly creative meetups. We call them on a Monday, so they're once a month uh, on a Monday, and. I started them, I was trying to think about this because I knew you were going to ask me about it. I think it was maybe five years ago I started them from literally from a place of knowing that before I had the shop, when I was working from home and do, setting up my creative business, business, it did feel very isolating. I had no like IT department. I had no one to help me with HR. I had literally no one to talk to when I made a cup of tea. So, and at that point, you kind of, you need that. You need people to bounce ideas off. You need people to just say, yeah, you can do this. Like, or do you want a hand with this? Or, yeah. So, and then from opening the shop, I then had lots and lots of people come to visit and say, just to talk to me about setting up a shop, to talk, talking to me about would I stock their pieces and just generally getting more from the creative community. And I just thought, okay, instead of everyone dropping in like every day of the week, I'm just going to do once a month and everyone can come. We can all chat together and we chat about everything from how can I set up my website? How can I do this? My husband's a pain and he won't help me with this. Like we cover everything and it's super informal, really relaxed. And that's what works really nicely. No funny name badges, no like having to stand up and say, hi, I'm Elizabeth, I do this. It's yeah. really informal. And I think it's really nice for people who work on their own or are setting something up. Yeah. Yeah. Out of interest, how many people here have a small business? Like, if you raise your hand. Okay. And how many of you have a bricks and mortar store? And how many of you have ever felt lonely running a small business? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. It is yeah. very isolating. I mm. actually got told off in my last job that I had um, uh, for being too loud because they were like, this is just a really quiet office. But I was like, I need to know if this is nice <laughs> or it's horrible. Can somebody just tell me? Yeah. And like when you're on your own, you don't have that. No. So sometimes it is really nice, like yep. you say, just to have a soundboard. Yeah. Because you go insane otherwise. Yeah, yeah, you like can. your ideas just go yeah. round and round. And you can go, I find, and I still find now having to make decisions, you just go decision blind. And if and having to, when you have a small business, you have to make decisions every hour of every day. It's a lot. So just to have people to point you in the right direction or to go, actually, that is really good. Or actually, are you sure you want to do that? Yeah. Um, maybe wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, but yeah, no, it's, it's brilliant. And then people, like, obviously COVID put paid to them for a long time, but we're getting back into it now and people really enjoy them. And it's a really informal atmosphere, which I think is key because a lot of networking can be really stuffy. horrible and stuffy yeah. and make you feel really nervous whereas this is like come and have a cuppa and a biscuit and a chat well you mentioned the c word covid like uh, yeah mm. how did it affect your business well obviously once i got over the initial oh my god what am i going to do um and like closing the doors not knowing when we were going to open them again i really really quickly within a week pivoted to going obviously completely 100% online and immediately set up gift sets, which I, you know, I used all of the knowledge that I already had from having the shop for quite a few years, knowing what people were buying, knowing that people were gonna want to, to still be gifting. Um, 
I did gift sets. I did uh, door drops straight to people's doors. I did, you know, Instagram was my best friend because I was telling people about everything. Um, but yeah, and it actually, it really helped to strengthen the community for me. I think obviously it was horrendous and I would never do it again. Like I yeah. really, really wouldn't want to because it was hard work. Um, and I think it has actually had quite a long standing effect on my mindset towards the business. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly now thinking, right, what can I do next? What can I do next? It's definitely been more of a driver, yeah. um, but it kind of in a way helped us in that it the local community really came together and people were spending because they knew that if they didn't spend with their locals then they would lose them and then obviously that's what nobody wants um but yeah it in a nutshell it was awful but it in some ways it was kind of good for us because it really strengthened the loyal community mm -hmm. and you mentioned mindset as well so mm -hmm. um i think it's like no it's really obvious that it has affected everybody's yeah. mindset over the time Massively. and that was when we started working together yeah. as well wasn't it and so <laughs> yeah. um we used to speak one-to-one -one on zoom yeah but really like having that focus on selling yep. still throughout mm -hmm. like a an unusual period of time yep. and I think we're almost going through it again with yes. the queen and um like we've had it with Ukraine we had it with BLM mm. like how do you notice people changing their spending or how do you notice the difference between how you show up because I saw on Instagram yesterday yeah. there was um, a lady called Lucy Sheridan you, you must follow her she's mm. amazing and she was talking about how small businesses are getting a really hard time whilst yep. still selling over the past weekend yeah and she said oh so are you also going into Marks and Spencer's and saying take all your product off the shelves yeah. are you also going into Tesco and say take all yeah. your adverts off the TV and I don't know, what, what are your thoughts on that, I guess, oh, about having a, small businesses still selling at difficult times? It's a really hard one because you want to be, you know, obviously you want to be seen and you probably are a brand that cares about what's going on in the world. And it's obviously at the forefront, but you do have to keep showing up because if you stop showing up, then people, you'll drop off the algorithm, however that works, who knows. Um, you'll drop off the algorithm, people will forget about you. It's, I think it's turning up in a considered way. It's not like, oh, woo, we're all having the best time of our lives while all of this terrible stuff is going on in the world. It's showing up in a considered way and kind of almost thinking if in, you know, what would I want to see? Um, I'd want to see a caring side, especially from a brand that is so rooted in community and the relationship with their customer I just kind of always put my customer hat on as if you know from the brands that I'm looking at sometimes I see something I think oh god that was a bit I potentially wouldn't have done that but you connect with different things don't you and I just think it's still keep showing up you have to you have to um but in a considered way yeah definitely i mm. agree um i guess it's almost like a permission slip to people if you are sort of yeah. like hovering on the edge and you're not sure like mm. just know that Bigger brands are doing it. Smaller yeah. brands are allowed to do it too. It's yeah. just, you might tweak the tone of it mm. slightly, but yeah. you're totally allowed to carry yeah. on selling. And I just think if you're not selling or if you're not prioritizing selling, then everything else is irrelevant, you know? Yeah. Like the, the back end of your website is irrelevant if you're not making sales. Yeah. You know, having to hire somebody is going to be pointless mm. if you're not making sales. Yeah. And if you, if you focus on selling, then everything else looks after itself. But it's always the thing that people kind of push to the bottom. Because, because it's the it's thing scary. that feels the most awkward. Yeah. Like you just feel like a bit of a plonker. <laughs> like it's hard. Selling your product is really hard thing to do to go, oh my God, look at me, I'm amazing. Look at this brilliant thing, buy it. Like, it's really hard. But I think it's finding your tone, finding the way that you talk to your customer. And I talk on Instagram on stories the way I would talk to anyone that walks through the front door of the shop, um, just in a, like, I'm chatting to my best friend kind of way. And then it feels less salesy. Yeah. It it's feels, almost like yeah. earning the right to sell to somebody, isn't yeah. it? Like, showing an interest in mm. people, remembering people's names. It's quite old-fashioned, I guess, but it's. It, I think retail has gone down a bit of a a weird road over the past maybe mm. like decade yeah. and actually just going back to the real basics of customer service and oh, community 100%. and yep. showing an interest in people yep. and then people like will respond to that yeah. and it just takes a bit of patience doesn't it to not oh, like especially yep. if you're quiet and you're just desperate for somebody to buy something yep. People can smell that desperation yeah. from a mile off. And it's brand building, isn't it? And that's yeah. one of the big things that you've always hammered home whenever I've done your online courses or in our one-to-one -one coaching. You're always tell your story 
tell people why they should buy from you, tell them your background, tell them how you ended up here, what would they get from buying this product, what product, what uh, gap in their lives would it fill? And then you're telling them why it's great and you're yeah. showing them why it's great. But that's one of the things that you've always, and, and it is hard, but if you can find your voice in the way that feels right for you, then it will just come really naturally. And if you're passionate about your product, then people will get that also and they'll feed off of that. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> because you told me. <laughs> I think the big message there is basically to assume people are interested. Yeah. I think that's what I'd really try and hammer home mm. is that um, it's so easy to assume they're not interested. Mm. If, you're, you know, if your algorithm is quiet or you're struggling to get people into the shop or, you know, just things are quiet at yeah. the moment. It, you know, we're coming into Q4 now, which is mm. essentially like the golden quarter yeah. of retail. Yeah. How do you feel about sort of the run up uh, to that? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, it kind of leaves me a bit speechless. It's obviously the busiest quarter of the whole year and a lot rests on it, a lot, because, you know, having a great Q4 helps the rest of the year. It helps those days in January where no one walks through the door and no one makes any sales. But it's being prepared. And I think, again, it's going to be reading the lay of the land Obviously, there's a bit of trepidation with the cost of living crisis, the queen dying, you know, none of these things anyone expected. But, we, you know, we got through a pandemic. We can, we can weather this. It's just keeping your head down, doing what you do. Don't deviate and suddenly panic and start thinking, oh, right, I'm going to change and launch a completely different product to try and help with the market. Just do, I think, I'm just going to carry on doing what I do, know what sells, know what people want, and do it in a considered way. But, yeah, Christmas is great <laughs> it's just a yeah. bit of a manic time that's, I think that's actually a really important message is not to deviate at yes. this stage and mm -hmm. go you know you see something online and go oh she's got 18 post bags full ready to go to the post office of that pink fluffy yeah. thing maybe I should do that and yeah. it's like no that yeah, would just no, not work don't for you be don't be tempted by a quick win yeah. because again your customers might go, what on earth is that? Why would I buy that from you when that's not something that you normally do? Yeah. They will come back for the things that they love that you do. Yeah. And that's like why they follow retail, you. retail, people almost like to put you in a bit of a box. It's yeah. like a good thing to mm -hmm. be put in a box, mm. to be known for something. I yeah, definitely. If they know what they're coming to you for, if they think, right, I'm going to go to Epanui because I want a beautiful gift for my best friend or my mum, yeah. then do that and do that well. Mm -hmm. Don't go, oh, yeah, I might also, I don't know, I can't think kids, of the kids toys yeah or kids toys like yeah plastic, just colorful yeah, yeah try not to do well, it's like being jack of all trades and master of none isn't it it's yeah. that age-old thing yeah and what's your favorite part of having the shop favorite part of the having the shop is probably obviously I love making the jewelry um but I love having the shop I love having a bricks and mortar I love styling the shop making it a place where people want to come and they want to come and feel lovely and find something lovely and just Creating a welcoming space. I think the styling of it, the windows, I love doing a window and planning my Christmas windows already. Um, what have you got in mind for Christmas? I can't tell you. It's top <laughs> secret. Well, if you want a little clue or a hint as to what Hannah's shops looks like, make sure to come and see us mm. over at uh, 160, which is literally just over there near the um, fire sign. Um, yep. And you get like just... I mean, her stand stands out from a mile away when you come and see like the, the love and care and attention that you put into it. Thank you. Um, so let's, uh, sorry, I've got, I'm not being rude on my phone. It's just... Um, just checking your Instagram. Just, uh, yeah, <laughs> just checking the time and the, the next part. Um, so kind of what are the conversations that you're having with your customer recently that, you know, coming out of lockdown, how is, how is it different, or if at all? Mm. As in the conversations that I'm having in the shop. In shop, yeah. Um, I think... I'm not sure it's changed entirely. There's a lot of care from the community. People are always knocking on the door and coming in and going, are you okay? How's everything going? And I'm like, yeah, we're great. Like, come on in. Don't You don't need to be worried about us. We're not going anywhere. Um, I think the mood, for sure, as soon as COVID lifted... Well, not COVID lifted, sorry. As soon as the lockdown lifted... Yeah. Um, there was like a, people were coming out and they were like, I'm going to buy those earrings because now I can go out and wear them and people can actually see them. I'm not going to wear them in my tracksuit on my sofa. There was definitely an element of that. And the first Christmas, everyone was so excited until we then got that other lockdown. And it's, it is a bit of a roller coaster. There's, there's massive highs and massive lows. And especially now, it's kind of like 
Like, this is going to be a weird analogy. Okay. But it's kind of like being in EastEnders. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where whatever, whatever they're talking about in the calf is basically the conversations that I have in the shop. Like, they'll be talking about the queen dying. They'll be talking about what's going on in the world. They'll be, you know, I have all of those conversations. So nothing's really changed. Everything's just really reactive. But so the customers react in peaks and troughs like we all do. Um, yeah. Yeah. And how have you found it being at Top Draw today? It's been great. Weekend, it's yeah. been really lovely meeting so many new stockists. So I haven't done it for quite a few years because we used to do top draw, which is how we grew the business. And then when I opened the shop and studio, it was a whole new ball game. So I sort of rested the wholesale side of the business while I grew the shop. And now we've had that for seven years and we're really well established. It's time to get back into the wholesale again. And we've met some really, really lovely new stockists. Lots of people placing really great orders for Christmas. Um, it's just been really nice getting out and meeting people again and chat, even if it isn't people that are placing orders, meeting new brands, learning about how everyone else is getting on. You know, everyone seems to be having the same conversations in that we're all a little bit nervous, especially with after Holly Tucker announcing yesterday that she was shutting her shop. That was, you know, a big deal and people were going, oh my gosh, if Holly Tucker's closing her shop, What's, gonna it, what's it going to mean for everybody else? Um, but generally, I think the mood is good. It's positive. We're all just looking forward, and we've got to keep looking forward and just keep powering on. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. Um, and where can people find you? Physically, they can find me at Stan 160, just around the corner. Um, you can find me online at www.epanoi.co.uk on Instagram, and the handle is just up there. Um, we're always open for a chat. Amazing. Well, thank you for sharing. Thank um, you for inviting me. Oh, yeah. Well, look, funny story, actually. Hannah and I bumped into each other at a local market mm. only a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And she said, oh, did I tell you I'm uh, showing at Top Draw? And I was like, oh, I need to message Top Draw to get to speak. And then they said, yes, you can speak if you can bring a bricks and mortar store. And then I gave back to Hannah. So there we go. Yeah. It, all, it was the universe. Yeah. But I agree. I think it's really nice to be out, like meeting people. Oh, if you're sat next to somebody, like swap Instagram handles. It's the best way to grow your Instagram is actually just in real life I think it's definitely it's like we forgot that's how you can grow mm -hmm. is that just meeting new people in real life it still feels weird I think definitely like it yeah. still feels weird like, especially yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're closer than two meters. yeah but being in a big room full of people is but it's so nice and it's so yeah. refreshing yeah yeah. Just getting back into the habit of um, speaking to new people. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm at Elizabeth Styles UK. I actually have a course coming up about um, selling online called The Sales Project. So if you are a little bit hesitant about selling in person or online, feels gross, feels weird, feels <laughs> icky, blah, um, then that is for you. So come and check it out. I and, would very much um, recommend them. Oh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we won't be taking live questions, but we are around all afternoon. We're just going to sort of, like, scoot back over to Stand 160. So if you want to come and say hi or ask us anything, we will be over there. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.